I started something on Tuesday that God wants me to finish today. And I just want to encourage you to set your mind to what God wants to do. I want to encourage you to set your mind the way we pray this morning, that God will exceed expectations. That God will exceed everything that you are trusting God for. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know I'm, I'm amongst those that God has sent me to today. That before December year 2019, one thing will happen for you and I. God will exceed our expectations. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This year in our church is a year of lines falling for us in what? In pleasant places. And on Tuesday, Bible study on Holy Communion service. And I must encourage you. Don't be staying at home on Holy Communion service day. It was in one Holy Communion service that we had. It was a fruitfulness service. That fruitfulness service that God answered a brother that gave testimony last week um, Sunday that she ha he had the fruit of the womb. That have, his, their prayers were answered. Please always ensure that you come. We started last week with Acts, the book of Acts 3. We discussed the story of a, a, a guy that was lame and was sitting by the beautiful gate. And the Bible said each time he comes in there, he sits down. He has expectation that people that pass by will give him quarters, will give him coins, will give him little money. Until one day, the Bible said for 40 years, the guy was being carried every day to that spot. And he will sit down in that spot. Brethren, I don't know how many years you have been struggling with a challenge. I know how many years I have been struggling with a challenge, but I don't know yours. But in regardless of if I know I, I, I don't know, the person that has sent me today to tell you, he knows completely. And he wants me to tell you that the way he exceeded the expectation of that man at the beautiful gate is setting things in motion to exceed your own expectations to in Jesus' name. Amen. That by December, by the grace of God, you're looking at it, you are like, what is happening? It's three months, almost nine months gone out of this year. Will it happen again in my life? As the Lord lives, it, it shall surely happen. Amen. Because the Bible says our, man, our God is no man to lie. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Carefully, he will make it what? Happen. And that shall be your portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. So this guy sits there at the beautiful gate. Then one day, Peter came, and he came with his colleague, and the guy was expecting. Someone say expecting. He was expecting quarters as usual. But Peter said unto that day, don't worry about it. Are you getting it? That don't worry about it. I'm not going to give you um, what has today that I'm going to give you greater thing that will wipe away all your tears. Brethren, when God shows, when He shows up, He wipes away all our tears. Yeah. He makes us whole. The woman of the infinity of blood at a particular point in her life finally met with God, and God met with her. And what happened? She was made whole. I don't know what whatever you are going through. When God meets with you before the end of this year, you shall be made whole. Every of your heart desire shall be answered Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. He was complete, she was completely made whole. Someone said completely. She was expecting quarters. She was expecting fragments. But she got more than she expected. God took care of her once. God, God took care of him once and for all. Today, by the grace of God, God will take care of you once and for all. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I don't want to go deep into that message. So let me just continue with where, where I stopped. God is a God who, in the life of that gentleman, a 40-year-old man, did the unthinkable. Someone said the unthinkable. Someone said the unthinkable. In your life today. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said God will do it in your life today. In the mighty name of Jesus. When the people in the temple saw the crippled man walking, running, thanking God, they couldn't believe it. The scripture said they were astonished. God is about to do something in your life that will astonish us. Yeah. Those that have been thinking that the way you went, that's the way you are going to come back. In the name above every other name, they will be discouraged. Yeah. You are thinking that how can I be blessed? What did not happen between January up till now? How will it happen from now till December? Let me let you, let you know something. One day is too much for God to bless you. Are you getting what I'm saying? All you need is an encounter with the almighty God. How could you be free? When so many are addicted, you're asking yourself, 
How can you be the one to have the spouse? Why well, you know that look, several people are looking for spouse? How can you be the one to have the baby? Why well, you know that there are so many handouts out there? God has me to tell you that this is your set time. Amen. That your time is now. Amen. That your time is now. Amen. When I look back at my own life, when I look back at this, my humble life, it has been God all true. It has been what? God all true. I was sharing with the church last week, Tuesday, about how God exceeded my expectations. I was talking to the church on Tuesday when I was one of the lowest times in my life. How God came through, not only came through, exceeded. Someone say exceeded. And exceeded my expectations. I was a young man who was who just started life. God was blessing me. I rented my own bungalow. I had my own car. I was getting a beautiful lady. And things was happening for me. I was getting ready to be settled. Then I went, to, I went into a business. I supplied my handgunning to one guy in Ota, in Lagos, Nigeria, almost 300,000. I'm talking about 25 years ago or 24 years ago. All the money that I had, I used to buy uh, my handgunning a far and rest for the guy. I was supposed to make good money. And what happened? The guy did not pay me on time. I could not afford to eat. Someone said afford to eat. I could not afford to eat. I was struggling. That to a point that I was going to Lagos, my wife stayed in Lagos then, I was going to drop her in Lagos and to come back. Then I was just going to drop her. I told her that when you get home, please just go into your kitchen, whatever you can gather together. Just tell me what? Gather it together. I'll take to where? And so I can eat for some time before the guy pays me. I was asking back to back, please pay me. He didn't pay me. I could not afford to buy medicine. So one, one faithful day like this, I pray for you today, God will exceed your expectations. Yeah. I have seen how God has helped me. And I know God has helped you too. But I'm talking about my own today. And I could not afford anything. So one day, I woke up in the morning. I think I finished my prayer. I was in my living room. I was waiting that God was going to happen. I don't have money to buy gas. I don't have money to buy anything. I was just there. One of the lowest, one of the lowest times in my life. Just, I was there, laid down in my living room. Then a guy, I saw a guy coming. So I'm like, how did the guest man allow this guy? They didn't tell me that I have a guest. So I saw him coming. The moment I saw him, like I told those of you here on Sunday, on, on Tuesday, what, what I went through my mind was that, oh man, this guy. You know, when people visit you in Africa, you must give them money for transportation. So I'm like, with what I have, where would I get the money to give this guy um, transportation money? So he came in, I opened the door, he came in, so he started talking. So he was like, what's wrong with you? I said, I'm okay. I said, before you even say anything, can you let me go to the woman selling provisions there and help me ask for alabuku? Alabuku is our equivalent of motrim. It is powerful. You understand? So I said, let me just get motrim because I was feeling sick, sickly then. So I said, let me just go. You know, if I go myself, I have to tell them I'll come back. But if I send somebody, that person will take the shame for me. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't have money to pay. And I had money, but the money was not in my hand. So the guy went, he collected the money, I took tea, I took the thing down. I was like, what, what happened? Why are you here? Oh, he said, I forgot. You have a letter. I'm like, a letter for what? I said to you today, when you are at the zero, the hero that God will make you a hero out of that zero. In the mighty name of Jesus. He's a God that exceeds what? Expectations. Expectations. So I was looking at the guy. So I was thinking, like the man was thinking, what would, would you want to give to me? What letter? Now, why would I do why would I mail letter to your house? Why would I get letter in your house? Because I have somewhere that I get my letters. So I said, This is your letter. So I just opened it. I'm like, what? So I just opened the letter. The letter that will make you scream for joy. In the name above every other name. There are people who ask you that what is happening. The Lord will release upon you. He's a God who answered by fire. Then I opened the letter, then I shouted. Because that letter, he carried a letter that was going to change the course of my history. He carried a letter that God was using to answer my expectations. It was the letter that I'm coming to America. Are you getting it? My lowest time in life. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what you are going through today, but the message, the email, the voicemail that will change the course of history, that will exceed your expectation, even before the end of this year, God will make it happen for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. What God has in store for you is much greater than you have imagined. And I believe that sooner than later, you are going to come to, to, come to the path 
of the exceeded expectations in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you put your faith in God instead of thinking, how can it happen? The pastor, you're just trying to psych me up. Even if I psych you up, brothers and sisters, I'm not psyching you up to believe in me. I'm psyching you up to have faith in your God. To have hope in your God. That this one too shall pass. Are you getting what I'm saying? That in the name above every other name, concerning my children, concerning my finances, concerning my challenges, every single thing that seems to be a challenge, that they too shall do what? They shall pass. If you don't have hope, how can you have faith? Are you getting it? So hope must precede faith. So I'm saying to you today, in the name above every other name, that today, by the grace of God, you might not have immigration papers. I know people, several people, that do not have immigration papers. But one way or the other, God sorted them out. That shall be your portion too. Amen. Yeah, I said to God, Lord, I want to thank you for you are going to exceed my expectations. Why don't you say that in your spirit? That I'm going to thank you for what? For exceeding my expectations. There's this story of a man who had problem, problem with his kidney. Then he told his wife that they went to check the wife. The wife matched. So they said, okay, the man said, no problem. The wife said, no problem. I will give you my, my, one of my kidneys. By the time they got to the operating theater, by the time they did the test, brothers and sisters, they found three kidneys in the woman. Three kidneys in the woman. So they just carefully did what? Removed one, gave it to the husband, and everybody was what? What? Okay. Brothers and sisters, I stand here today. That God that did that for them is able to do it for you. He says, is there anything what? Difficult for me to do. There's nothing. It can exceed expectations. A man was by the, by the beautiful gate for 38 years, the Bible said. But one day, brothers and sisters, help came from God. That help that came from God unto him is about to locate us. Amen. That was God exceeding their expectations. I want to tell you today that God has it all figured out. Don't, be, don't, be, don't struggle. God has it what? Figured out. I'm telling you the truth. I have gone to a point in my life. Sister Didi is here. We used to work in the church office together. Sister Didi would say, Pastor, you are not worried. I said, no, how will I be worried? If there's no one that worried more than me in the past. But as time went by, I saw how God dispelled all my worries. Are you getting it? That one by one, all the things that was having sleepless nights, one by one, God sorted it out. So I decided, because I know by my by, by, by strength shall no man do what prevail. So give all your trust unto who? Unto God. I think about ten years ago, twelve years, ten years ago, Sister Shirley was taking. They had we had a, a fair outside here, and Sister Shirley was taking my BP and said, Pastor, your blood, your blood pressure is okay. I said, What do you expect? He said, With everything, I said, I don't bother when my I know that something will happen. Are you get what I'm saying? He that watches over Israel does not sleep nor slumber. He that watches over me does not what sleep nor slumber. So why would I be on, why would I not be sleeping? At times I don't sleep, but why would I not be stressing? Are you get what I'm saying? He has it all figured out. He knows what you need. He knows what you are going to need. He has lined up breakthroughs for you. He has lined up the right people. Someone say the right people. The right people to help you. He's directing your steps. You are thinking that, why did I come here? Why is God making me go through all this stress? But let me tell you something. It is a prepared assignment for you until your next level. Joseph did not know that until he became the prime minister. Is that true? That every of his attics was leading him to where God wanted him to be. I don't know the attics that is going through you. I don't know if I can hear myself that I'm shouting what God is preparing for me that, but I will take it and I will use it. Maybe God wants to enlarge my, because I'm shouting. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That whatever is happening in your life today that seems to be hard takes for you, God might be setting it up for you. How many of us in the past have gone through some things that you said, God, why? Then after you left that particular challenge, you said, God, thank you for that challenge. Are you getting it? That God, thank you for that challenge. Today, in the name above every other name, I stand there by you who has sent me. That everything that you are trusting God for, in the name above every other name, before December, it shall come to pass. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh.
I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I have seen God do wonderful things in my life. Great things in my own life. There was a time we were renovating this church. Not this renovation, the one we did before this. And we had a finance person then, one of our ministers. I can say her name very well, Star Juni. And it was on a Wednesday, I think. On a Wednesday. And we did not have a dime again. I've shared this testimony before. A dime to finish the renovation. So we are here. I think, uh, yes, we are here. We didn't have money to pay the contractors. And I said to the contractor, come next week Tuesday. You know that kind of thing. Just come next week Tuesday. The truth of the matter is that if he comes, if there's no money, I won't keep myself. I'll say there is what? So I said, come. So Sardine was like, ah, Pastor, hey, I said, don't worry about it. I can't keep myself. One guy just entered this place. How many remember that um, the testimony? One guy just came into this place. He said, wow. What did you guys do here? Because he came the last Sunday. You know what I'm saying? And the place was not. Then over the week, pa, 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 we changed this place around. We renovated the whole place. He came and said, what? I love what I see here. You know how much the guy gave us? $5,000. $5,000. Sajini came. Sajini said, ah, pastor, hey, pastor. If you know what happened, I said, what happened? He said, you see this check? I said, yeah, I know, pastor, I know. Brethren, in my life, I have seen how God has demonstrated his greatness. And I know that once he, if he can exceed my expectations, then he's able to exceed it now. Are you getting it? Are you getting what I'm saying? So by the grace of God, God will exceed your expectations. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Hmm. God will exceed your expectations. God will ex exceed your ex expectations. Yeah. I had this phrase so strong in my spirit on Tuesday. I had it so strong. And I tap into it myself. I tap into it for um, members of the church. That by the grace of God, great things will happen for us. Yeah. God is saying to you today, I'm about to exceed your expectations. During this program that is coming, divine expression, God is ready to express himself divinely onto our lives. He's ready, getting ready to show us great things that we know it's not. Is there's a table of all you can eat ready for us this month that you and I must tap into for great things to happen. He's ready to show us favor. He's ready to show us favor. The challenge I just have is that how can you make this be rooted in your spirit? That not by the time you leave this church, you have forgotten that, and you go back to your grumbling. Are you getting what I'm saying? That this should be rooted in your spirit. And every day of your life, every minute of your life, whatever happens to you, you are saying to your friend, you are saying to your brother, that you know what? God is about to exceed my word expectation. They say, what is wrong with you? You, these Christians, you have come. They have shown you a letter that they are going to evict you. You have shown this, and you have said, no. He that watches over Israel does not sleep not slumber. Are you getting it? That God is ready to take care of me. I stand here, Lord Almighty, and I pray that God will let it be written in your spirit. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. It is easy to dismiss that it will never happen to me. The odds are against me. It's been too long going through this issue. Yes, I know you. it's easy for you to say it. But I know there's a woman in the Bible. Her name is called Hannah. Someone say Hannah. She was very, very, she was a very, very, very rich woman. The Bible says that she was very, very rich. And she has been married for length of years. Length of years. And each time the man of God comes to her house, brothers and sisters, he will ask her, do you have a need? And what will be her response? I don't have any. Until the servant of the prophet said, sir, this woman has a need. So what is her need? That she needs children. And the unfortunate thing, brothers and sisters, is that this woman, nine months after the man of God has spoken unto her life, what happened? All her expectations, though she did not have any. But the truth of the matter is that she did not have any, but God has a plan for her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She did not have any because she don't worry about it. I don't need it again. She was content without having a dream. She stopped dreaming. I'm not sure maybe you have stopped dreaming. But I said to you today, in the name above every other name, God will take care of you. Yeah. What really made that story very, very interesting was that she had children. She did not have children. But her husband married. So the wives that came after her, 
Did you hear that? In the likes of Perlina, is that true? Came after what? We're having kids. We are saying to you, those that joined this church last year, they're already married. And I've been here for 10 years. Those that met me in this church, those that met me in the choir, those that met me in America, those that met me, when will my own time come? Are you getting it? You think you don't have challenges? Me, I'm thinking that God, ah, as you are thinking your own, me, I'm thinking my own God. Eh, this year is going to, this church, we have not moved. God, help us. You know, different, everybody has their own death. I'm saying the truth to you. I'm saying the truth. And it's like this in my heart. But I know for sure that if God can answer Hannah, who two, three wives came after her and gave her one of the best songs, not an ordinary song, that changed the course of history. I want you to be patient that that God is getting ready to answer you too. Yeah. Are you getting it? He's getting ready to answer you too. And when he answers you, let's look at that story. Samuel is one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. Is that true? Yeah. So it was not an ordinary child. So the extent of her troubles was the extent in which God blessed her. Those that had had children before her, the one that came after was my child and the one they have had. So when my miracle comes, Although I have stayed late for it, I have stayed long time for it. By the grace of God, those that have gone ahead of me, I will overtake them. Yeah. And it's better that it comes last, that I become an overtaker, than somebody overtaking me. Did you get that? Yeah. It took care of all her problems. I've seen God exceed expectations. There's a lady in our church. She has been trusting God, believing God. We have prayed. Things have happened in her life. She's a member of the prayer band. She will come from almost 45 minutes. She will drive to church on, Bible, on, uh, Holy Com on prayer band days. She will come to church on, t on Sunday, leaving, coming from work, although she comes late at times on Sunday. But God is a merciful God. I guess what I'm saying. God is a merciful God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. She was praying. She's been a member of this church for almost 10 years. She never relented. She was praying night and day. She was praying like Hannah was praying. And one day, the Lord said unto her, I have heard your prayers. Remember, I have told you that I will never leave you nor forsake you. You know, remember the, the woman by the pool of Bethesda. There was no man to help him. But my, the Lord decided to help him. That the Lord, I'm still the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I do not change. I have come to your situation. And God gave her how many kids? Only four. One time. And is that God exceeding expectations? Yeah. This is not a story that you read somewhere. It's a story that you see. And praise the Lord. That's the woman behind there. And the Bible says, Miles Monroe, not about but Miles Monroe says, what God can show to you, he can give to you. Yeah. Are you getting it? What God can show to you, he can do what? Give unto you. And I stand there and pray for you and I that if God can do that for her, in the name above every other name, what seems to be difficult in our lives, God will surmount it for us. Amen. God will exceed it for us. Amen. But brothers, you must think it in your heart. You must live it. You must work it. You must not let situations around you deter you from going for it. From going for it. But one of the things that God has helped me with is a determination to trust him. I might be whatever in other ways, but one thing, I just, I just trust God. And I have it in my spirit that he that watches over me. He does not. He does not. So one day, I just packed my load. I said I was going to China. No. I want to bring out something in this. Are you getting what I'm saying? To bring out something in this. I don't know any single soul in China. But going to China is not the problem. People go to China and the rest. But I want to, I will, you will see where the, where the trust is. That in everything that you do, one thing that must be paramount in your, in your heart is the hope in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? That don't worry about it. God will do what? He will exceed my expectations. My expectation is that I'll just go to China. I had some business things to do there. I'll just do it. But what happened? I landed in Guangzhou 11.30 p.m. in the land that I did not know anybody. 
and in the land that I've been hearing stories, you would think I'm saying in Jesus' name, but you think that I will arrive around 3.30. Are you getting in the afternoon? So you get with, so I can see everything. No, I chose 11.30 what? PM. That was when I landed. And there are many flights from Dubai to China that they go about maybe three times. It was the time that I landed. That's not the, the big thing. No. I'm going to a land that they don't speak English. I'm going to a land that I'm a, do I look white? OK, good. I'm a black man. Are you getting it? I'm going at the odd hour of what? 11.30. And the thing was that I wasn't going to Guangzhou. That's 11.30 when I land, take my things from immigration, whatever. I'm still going to a, a place one and a half hours from Guangzhou called Fushan around 11.30. Are you hearing this? You get it? So when I was coming, I said it when I did my research online and the rest like that. I'm talking about a God who exceeds what? Expectations. People are asking me, how can you be going to this place? Have you ever been there before? And yeah, I said I was in Shanghai about five years ago. Now you are going to this place. People are saying lots of things, but trust me, I was focused. So I got there. So of course, when I landed, I was now going to Fushong, one and a half hours. So I have to pack my things. So the tendency is that by the time I come out, it'll be like 12.30. Is that true? I'm still going where? One and a half hours. So, so when I got out, I was asking people. So I had it in mind. I was going to take a taxi. I Googled it. The taxi was going to be like $100. I said, I'll just take a taxi. I'll just be OK. So when I got to Guangzhou, I just looked at it and said, ah, how can I waste $100? Ah, that's a lot of money. I'm not going to waste $100. I said, I just asked, I said, I'm going to take bus. I'm telling you, bus was like about maybe $40 or something. I said, no, I can't be wasting money like that. So, and I went outside. So I was asking the people, English? I said, no, English. No. So at the point, my heart skipped. Then I remembered my wife and my children at home sleeping. So I said, English? I said, no, go. I said, God, you just need to help me here. So finally, now what I do when I travel is that I don't ask one person for the direction anywhere I go. I ask like two, three people. So I take an average of what they tell me. You get what I'm saying? So I said, where's the bus? Bus, Fushan? Bus, Fushan? They will say, wait, 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 you go. <laughs> God will exceed your expectations. Amen. But what I want to bring out of this is that you must always have it behind you. Anything you do, that God is there for me. So I asked like two, three people. So I'm like, ah, remember, I'm still going to Fushan. When I land in Fushan, when I <laughs> got to Fushan around two o'clock, I still need to get to my hotel. Are you getting it? So I finally, the now finally, I now went to buy the ticket. I bought the ticket. So I'm like, God, is your hand that I commit my life right now? I'm going to one and a half hours in this bus. I'm the only black guy I can see. So I didn't see any black person in the place. So I bought my ticket. I, I entered the place. The driver said, I said, for sure. So I, go, 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 sit down. So I just went to sit down. As I sat down, because I was, I like to plan ahead. So I was trying to get ready to plan for when I drive to Fushan to. So I just look. Always have it. Say to your neighbor, always have it at the back of your mind. That your God got you. So I just asked the lady, I said, hello, how are you? Hello. Hi. Say hi. I said, English? You know what she said to me? I'm an English teacher. Oh. Are you getting it? It can only be God. It can only be God. In the whole of China, in the whole of Guangzhou at that time, that the only person sitting by my side was not speaking French, was not speaking Arabic, was an English word, teacher. So he's the one that will go ahead of us. He will make a way where there is no way. So when I got to Fushan, immediately I know this person, I said this one, we will talk. And I can pick conversations. So I started talking. I will sleep away. Chichi will sleep away. I will wake up again. Say, go, go. Because I wanted to keep her alive until we get to. <laughs> so when we arrived there, I got to a taxi place. And she said, I should follow her. So I followed her. So the taxis were waiting for the bus. You know how they wait for the bus. 
So I said, um, I was going to the Crown Plaza. Crown Plaza, I don't say no, don't follow that one. Now, I now look at it. We have to talk to like three, four cab drivers in their language. So I imagined if it was me at that time. No, what will happen is that I'll just overpay. You know what I'm saying? I'll just say address. You say, mother, just let's go. Just that. But God, and what I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters, he has already gone ahead of you. Right. Are you getting it? All you have to do is take that step. Don't let no man, don't let no woman dilute what is in your heart. When you are coming to America, did you have anybody in America? Okay, maybe you had a cousin or two. Is that true? Some of us had. Some of us did not have. But look at you today. Are you getting what I'm saying? It has been God. And that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If you are excited about that God, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So what I'm saying to you today, brothers and sisters, that God is able to sort you out. God is able to sort you out. I was time we were working on this church. I'm talking about my life, how God has exceeded expectations. We bought this church, for the information, we bought this church for $960,000, a million dollars. And the bank wanted us to show that we could, after the money, that we could pay. So I was trying to raise money. Someone say raise money. Someone say raise money. I was trying to raise money. So I called a pastor friend. So I said, Pastor, how are you? His name is Pastor Dako. I've said this several times. And I'm just trying to let you know that God is in the place, is in the position to always exceed your expectations. So I said, Pastor, how are you, sir? I said, uh, I'm fine, blah, blah, blah. I said, Pastor, we just, I need money. That's why I'm calling you. And I said, okay. I wait till we have done it. I said, I know. I said, what can you do for us? I said, in my heart, I was thinking, Pastor, that was going to loan us, was going to give, I was soliciting how much? $1,000. But as a church, let him just give us $1,000. So I was talking to him. I said, Pastor, so whatever you have, you can give. So if you don't have money now, uh, when I had that, I was desperate. I said, no, whatever you have, just do what? Just give it to us. We'll take it. He said, okay, no problem. Um, we'll give you 100000 Straight up. So I said, hello, Pastor. Because I was expecting what? 1000 Although he borrowed us, but it was $100,000. That he wrote a check. And they signed and they said, take. When you finish, give it back to me. Someone that was expecting what? 1000 Got what? $100,000. I'm sharing examples in my own life that I have seen. I have a thousand of examples I can share. So that's why I come to you, brethren. Now, don't give up. What about you not happen from January up till this time? The remaining three months is too much for it not to happen. And God does not need those hours to help you. A day in the life of God takes care of all issues. All you have to do is to be focused. All you have to do is to be encouraged that your God is able to do it. All you have to do is to serve God. Serve God. Be in alignment with God's purpose for your life. Be in alignment with God in church. Be in alignment with God in what he wants to do. And eventually, trust me, those that have gone ahead of you, you will overtake them. Amen. As the Bible says, don't worry about it. You will, you will get your things together. You will pursue them. You will overtake. And you do what? You will recover every single thing. So therefore, I stand here and I prophesy upon somebody's life today that in the name above every other name, you will overtake. Amen. You, will, you will pursue. Amen. You will overtake. Amen. You will recover Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you are that person, rise up and begin to pray today that Lord Almighty, every single thing that I need to recover, Father, today, let it be recovered in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brother, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Leave that bag alone and pray unto the Lord. That Lord Almighty, every single thing that I need to recover, in the name above every other name, let me recover it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brother, pray as if you understand what we have said today. That Lord Almighty, everything I have lost, everything that I need to learn, everything that I need to know, Father, before the end of this year, let me recover all. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, go ahead of me. Father, go ahead of me. Whatever I may have lost. Father, I stand here by the order of heaven. 
and I declare in the name above every other name, let, me, let it be recovered in the mighty name of Jesus. In my life, Lord Almighty, let it be recovered. Brother, you are not praying. It's as if you are okay with where you are. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence take it by force. That Lord Almighty, let me recover. Let me recover. Ah, many of us are not praying. Wow. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. I know we believe in the Bible, but let us assume that the Bible at times might be challenging for some to believe in. For you can see the life of our sister, Sister Ham. Enretta. Enretta. Four kids, and God made it equal. Two, two. Whenever they are saying foot of the womb again, she will run. They are, what? They are praying for foot of the womb. She will just hide under the table. And say, God, I, I let it pass over me, Lord. Let it pass over me, Lord. That's the truth. <laughs> For one time, if you see her, if you see her in church, just like this. I know why. I'm go, I want us to pray today. The answer to our prayer that will shut that prayer down forever. Are you getting it? It will do what? Shut it down. May the Lord do it before December. Let us begin to pray that Lord Almighty, what will shut down that prayer point? Father, today I stand in the name above every other name. In the life of your spouse, in the life of your um, children, in the life of your business, in the life of your career, in life of your in your in your in your personal life, in the search for spouse, search for children, that Lord Almighty rise up and exceed my expectations. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help me, Lord Almighty. I have shared with your people what you want me to share with them. Father, rise up in your power. Rise up in your glory. And make it happen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, exceed our expectations. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, many of us are so quiet. Wow. Pray, brethren. Pray. There is nothing difficult for God to do. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Oh, I didn't hear that. Amen. amen. Brethren, there are times in our lives that some situations, situations make us think that some things can never happen to us again. Are you getting it? I didn't hear that, church. How many of us are in tune with what I'm speaking about today? Yeah. I'm not getting that energy from you. How many of us know that there are some situations in our life that make us think that it's over? Yeah. I think I was showing to my wife already. I was on social media. I think the status of somebody, I'm not sure. And I saw one lady. The lady was sitting on a wheelchair. And there was this guy who said, that is the one that I want to marry. Are you getting it? Yeah. And they were dancing. How many saw it? In, um, you saw it? Raise up your hand if you saw it. Yes, it was all of us who there this week. And I looked at it and I said, there will be a time that this lady will think that even those that are not on wheelchair, they don't have husband. Talk less of what? Me. On what? On a wheelchair. But she has forgotten the scripture that says that I am the Lord that will make servants to ride on horseback. Did you get that? I will make what? Servants to ride on what? On horseback. And God brought a man, full man. Are you getting it? And that man came and that man said, you are the one that I want to spend the rest of my life. In the life of that lady, was her expectations exceeded? I don't know what impediment you have in your life. I know about some challenges that I'm trusting God for. I want you to pray our last prayer today. 
I want you to pray as if you understand that if God can do it for that lady, let God rise up and do this for me. Let us begin to pray. Fire. Pray unto the Lord that Lord today let it be you raise an altar unto the Lord. That whatever impediment I have in my life, Father, exceed my expectations. I lack money. Everywhere I lack help. That Lord Almighty today, Oh, brother, many of us are not praying. If you don't have any prayer point, please pray for me. That by December, let God overcome all the impediments. Commit everything to the hands of God. God that answered by fire. Yeah. Something happened to me last week, Tuesday. This Tuesday that just passed. I've been trusting God, so I decided that I was going to pray for seven days, every, every morning. I was going to hit on some things. And we had Holy Communion here on Tuesday. By the time I finished the Holy Communion, I know what I was asking God for. For seven days. I finished, I think, on the seventh day, which was yesterday. And on Tuesday, as I finished Holy Communion, Sister, uh, Sister Patricia's daughter just came to me, Sister Nancy, and she showed me an email. She showed me a message on her phone. Is she here? She's not here. Okay. She just showed me a message on her phone that God sent her to me on that thing that I've been asking God for. I'm not kidding you. On Tuesday. On Tuesday. She just came. How many saw her here when she came on Tuesday? After you saw her, that she came here. She just showed it to me. Exactly what I was trusting God for. Are you getting it? That God said she should tell me. She wrote it down. That God said I should tell you. And she wrote it down. She showed me. I wanted to weep. I did not pray for seven days. It was just three days. What am I saying? There is a God who exceeds expectations. And that God is in this church. You are going to lift up your hands unto God. That God notice me for blessing. God what? Notice me for blessing. Lift up your hands and pray. I told you that God says he wants to do exceeding things. Pray as if you understand. Ask God to remember you. Lord, this is our season. This is our time. Father, remember us. In the name of Jesus, you are the God that exceeds expectations. You have showed us severally that you are still God. If there is a man or woman to pray that there is a God that hears and answers. Oh, Father, Lord, notice us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You have done this before. You are able to do it again and again. 
choir have sang the song that you are God that does things again and again. Holy Spirit, you exceeded the expectation of David. The Bible told us in 1 Samuel 30 verse 8 that David asked you, should he go? Will he recover it all? You exceeded his, 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 his question. He only asked for two things, but you responded with three. You said he should go. He will recover. Oh, he will. He will. He will take. He will take over, and then he will recover all. Lord, he overtook them. He recovered all. Jehovah, the God of recovery, remember us. Remember us, Jehovah. Thank you, Abba Father. We can see everything is turning around for our favor. Father, we are ready for the power, for the rain to fall. We are ready for the dew to begin to rest upon us. Lord Jehovah, are you praying at all that this is our season? This is our time. Are you ready as God? Things are turning for our good. Father, thank you. God of expectation. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, all that we have placed before you, Lord, let it be so. In the name of Jesus, the God that have authority and approval. The Bible says, he that has the key of David is holy. Whatever he closes, no man can shut. Whatever he shut, no man can open. Lord, we have come before you with great expectation. And we have heard, oh God, that you are God that exceeds expectations. Lord, put a stamp of approval. In the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be thy name, O God. David said, can I go? You said he can go. He said, will I overtake? You said, yes, he can. And then you said to him, because you are God that exceed expectations, you said he will recover it all. He didn't ask for recovery, but you exceeded his expectation. Father, we have come before you. Everything that we have placed before you by your mercy, Lord, put a stamp of approval in the mighty name of Jesus. Ex exceed our expectation this week in the mighty name of Jesus. And everything will turn around for our good for a greater testimony. Blessed be the name. Father, we thank you, God, for your servant that you have used. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you will refill him in the mighty name of Jesus. He will not fail. He will not fall. In this season that you are raising giants for your kingdom, Lord, you have raised him. He will not fall again. In the mighty name of Jesus. And every one of us, that when the trumpet shall sound, Lord Jehovah, none of us will, find, will be found missing. In the name of Jesus. Bless us, O God, and we return all the glory to your name. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Is that a better way to say it? <laughs> Come on, put those hands together and celebrate Jesus with me.